Hi everybody, it's Mrs Kemp here. I am going to be showing you today how to use place value counters in addition and subtraction. This video is aimed mostly at the middle of the school, so anyone from about primary three to primary six would find this really useful. If you're a very enthusiastic primary two, or if you just want a recap of working with some larger numbers, then it would be great for you as well. You might want to get a pencil and some paper to join in, and I'll tell you how to make your own place value counters at the start of the video. So if you do want to use them and do it along with me, you might want to pause it after the first couple of minutes to get your place value counters ready so that you can join in. I hope you enjoy it. Place value counters are essentially small counters with different colours that you can make or cut out that have the values of the different columns on there. So there's a one place value counter, a 10, a 100 and a 1000 place value counter. You can keep going, you could have tens of thousands all the way up to the millions and you can go this way as well. You can make them for tenths and hundredths. But just for today to show you how they work, I'm just going to focus on these main four. It's really easy to make your own place value counters just with some different coloured bits of paper or even white paper that you colour in. If you want to print some off, if you just search in Google, you'll come up with lots of options for printing. Or if you'd rather use something online than make your own, you can go to mathspot.com and to the manipulative sections where you will find the place value counters section over towards the right hand side. First, place value counters can be useful for looking at how numbers are made up. So for example, for 736, I can place out my 700 counters. Five, six, seven. Three tens counters for the 30. And six ones counters for the ones. Now you might spot, I've organized the tens and the ones in lines and columns so they're easier to count. My hundreds here are a little bit all over the place so they're a bit harder to keep an eye on. There we go. So it's a good way to see I've got 736. It's also a really good way to see what happens if you do an addition or subtraction. So if I did 736 take away 100, it's a very visual way to see, okay, I've taken away my 100. Now I only have 600 left, but my tens and my ones haven't changed. So I've got 636 now. You can use it for addition in exactly the same way. So 636 add 121. I would keep them just slightly separate so you can see which bits you've done. There's your 636 and we're adding 120. There's my two tens for the 20. One. And it's a very visual way again of then seeing what you've got all together. So 636 add 121 is 700 and 57. For the next part, it's really important to understand a few things. The first thing that we need to understand is that 10 ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, equals one ten. Equals just means balance is the same. So there's 10 on this side. And there's also 10 here. It's different ways of showing the same number. So 10 of these individual one counters equals a single 10 in the tens counter. In the same way, 10 tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 10 tens equals 100. We've got 100 on both sides here, but just different ways of showing it, either 10 tens or a single 100. And also that 
10 one hundreds, so 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. 10 one hundreds equals 1000. We've got a thousand on this side as 10 one hundreds and we've got a thousand on this side as a single counter. This is going to be really important to understand how the next step using these place value counters works. Okay, let's have a go at this one. 436 add 145. I've already put my 400, my 30 and my 6. So I need to add my 100, my 40 and my 5. Now I'm actually going to start from the 1s this time. The only reason that I'm starting here is because once we move on to doing this with written methods, it's much easier to start from the 1s. So if we get into the habit of it now, it's just easier to switch later. So I need 5 more 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll put this one just at the side so that you can see it. Five. Okay. I need four tens. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. And I need one more hundred. Here we go. One hundred. Okay, there's my one hundred and forty five. Now, when I start to add them together, I can see here that six add five is 11. Now this is why we needed to remember that 10 ones equals 1 10. So I'm going to take 10 ones from here and I'm going to exchange them for 1 10. And the reason that we do this is because it helps us with the writing. There we go, there's my 1 10, I'll just move them up. This is the one that I've just put in. Okay, I took 10 of the ones and I exchanged them for a 10. A really good way of thinking of it is if you think of these as pennies and this is a 10p, I've given somebody 10 pennies and I've exchanged it and got 10p coin in return. I've still got this one left though because there were 11 here all together. Now let's have a look how many 10s do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's still under 10 so that's fine. And I've got five over here. So now we can have a look and see what we've got. We've got, I'm going to just move them up for you so that we can write at the bottom here. We've got one in the ones. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 here. There we go. And we've got five hundreds over here. So all together, we've got 581. Okay, how does this work for subtractions? 346 take away 270. So I've got my 346 there ready to start. Now I need to take away. So I need to have a look here. I need to be a bit more confident now with this being my hundreds, my tens, and my ones. Go. Okay. So, do I need to take away any ones? Nope. Zero. I don't take away any ones. I need to take away seven tens. But I've got a problem because I've only got four tens here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exchange just like I did in the addition, but this time I'm going to exchange a larger place value counter. 100 for 10 tens. So here's my 100. Again, you can think of it like money. You can think of this like being a pound. And I'm going to take this one out. And in its place, I'm going to put 10 tens or 10 10 piece. Now, these might not quite all fit on. I might need to squish them up a little bit for you. There's four, five, six, seven, Eight, and I'll pop a couple up here just so that we can see them all. Nine and ten. Okay. Now in the tens, I've got four that I started with 
and the 10 that I exchanged from the hundreds. So we should have 14. Let's just check 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Well, 7 take away, uh, sorry, 14 take away 7. That's easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. And I've still got seven tens left there. I've dealt with my tens now. I can move on to my hundreds. I need to take away two hundreds. I had three at the start, but I exchanged one of them for the tens. So I've only got these two left. So I have to take them both away. And what I can see is my answer. I've got six ones left and 70 in the tens column. So my answer is 76. If you haven't already, have a go at making your own place value counters and doing some addition and subtraction calculations on your own. Bye for now.